Today is a day of decision. Today is a day of commitment. Today is a day of resolve. I'm going to walk you through a number of exercises. There's no more teaching. This morning is all about how you take everything you learned, at least some of the things you learned, and put them into practice. Let me just give one closing thought as it relates to slowing down in a fast-paced world. Living slow, not necessarily by activity, but in your thoughts, in your attitude, in your perspective, is a conscious choice. And my hope for you this weekend is that you learned, not just had the chance, to, you not just learned, you had the chance to experientially practice at a few different points in time over the weekend, being present, slowing down your thoughts, appreciating, enjoying, and savoring each special moment. You've learned those things, but it's now a conscious choice to live it out day by day. I often think about, when I think about all the dirty dishes that need to be washed, for me, the dirty dishes come in the form of, there's nothing dirty about them, I'm just thinking in terms of workload, the emails, the texts, the meetings, the to-do list items, and I have to continually bring myself back to, all of these things are part of having the opportunity to create, to inspire, and to solve complex issues and challenges. And that's a special thing. We each have that opportunity each day, and it's easy to get lost in another email, get lost in another meeting, get lost in another training session, and to pull ourselves back to that bigger purpose of what we're actually doing. But I often think about the President of the United States, any President, any Prime Minister worldwide, and think about the magnitude of the responsibilities that they have. So often we feel the weight of the responsibilities we have, and many of us carry a lot of different responsibilities. And how do you deal with that weight? When I think about the U.S. President and all that he has has to decide on on a day-to-day -day basis, all that he has to manage. How does he go home and sleep peacefully at night? How does he shut down at the end of a day in which he's dealing with Middle East issues and all the different things that have not just an influence on his country, but worldwide can change the trajectory of mankind and he has to be able to shut down and enjoy dinner with his children. When I think of that, and I think of all the presidents that have served and prime ministers nationwide, and they have to be able to take that weight of responsibility and take an endless series of things that have to get done, decisions that have to be made, and they have to be able to put those to the side and be present with those that they love and those that they care about. And when I think about that, and having read quite a bit on a number of different presidents over the past hundred years, I'm reminded that if they can do it, surely I can do it with the few responsibilities that I have. And surely you can do it with the responsibilities that you have. And hopefully this weekend you picked up some tools and strategies and a mindset for how to do that. So now we jump into some practical exercises to help you live this out. We're gonna do one or two together, a few you're gonna do alone. And my hope for you is that you'll be able to take these back with you, the ones that we do together as a group, and that you can apply them in the same way that I've applied them on a daily basis in my life. Let's jump into the first one, gratitude. I'm gonna let you get this in your notes for those of you who wanna get it in your notes, and then we're actually gonna do it. Five different things or people that you can be considering if you, if you were to take some time each day to express gratitude. And you can do it with just a mindfulness or actually expressing it out loud. It might be even in the form of a prayer, however you like to express your gratitude. I'm going to give you these five quickly and then going to give you the opportunity to do it. Number one, someone in your family, a family member. 
Number two, someone you're challenged by. And that could be a family member. <laughs> someone you're challenged by. Number three, yourself. Let me pause on that one. To express gratitude for a family member that you love or care about, pretty easy to do, probably something you've done many times in the past. To think thoughts of appreciation towards someone that you're challenged by, maybe someone that rubs you along the wrong way. It could be a teammate. As coaches, it could be someone that you're coaching. For those of you that are working, it could be a coworker, could be a family member or even a friend or a neighbor, someone that you're challenged by. To see the best in them and be appreciative of them. And maybe, at minimum, it's how they're helping to refine you as you learn to see them, as Steve talked about, with love and grace. But the third, ourselves, you're appreciating yourself. What's the benefit of appreciating yourself? Well, if you believe that everything that even you have is a gift that's been given to you, and so that your work ethic, your passion, your positivity, whatever it may be, is not just something that you've developed, but that that's been quite possibly something you have developed, but something that's been a gift given to you that you've had the privilege of developing and, and maximizing, something to appreciate and be thankful that you were given those gifts. And so to express appreciation for yourself. So often we're our number one judge and number one critic and we don't take the time to appreciate ourselves and what we've been given. It's loving yourself, being a friend to yourself just the way you love others and be a friend to others. Number four, to God. And I realize that many of us come from different faith backgrounds and perspectives but I think most of us would probably acknowledge that there's a higher power that's leading and directing and gives us the very breath that we have the ability to enjoy each day to be alive. And the fifth one you might not have thought about, your career. For some of you, it's your athletic career. For some of you, it's your coaching career. For some of you, it's your work career. I'm going to give you the opportunity to put these into practice. And for each one, you may just think of one or possibly two things that you're grateful for. And I'm going to walk you through each one, one by one. In a given day, when you get up in the morning, if you were to begin the day with gratitude, and you were just to take two or three of these, you don't even have to take the same two or three every day. You don't have to take the same two or three people every day. It might change a different family member each day. If you were to make this a habit, as James Clear shared with us, is expressing gratitude before his meal. If you were to make this a morning routine of filling your life with an attitude of gratitude, not only will you find that you're more joyful, that you're more appreciative, you'll find that it oozes and spills out and overflows to others as well. And that you see others in a different light because you're seeing the best in them. And you're seeing the best in yourself. There's a difference between living a full, rich, rewarding, life-giving life and being busy. And being busy. Busy to me just sounds like a whole lot of activity that leads to feeling stressed and feeling worried and feeling frustrated. And I don't know about you, but I, I really think there's only three things I do in a day. I create. At least I attempt to. I inspire. At least I attempt to. And I try and solve complex challenges and create solutions. And I think that's what you do every day as well. You create. Some of you are creating an environment for your team as a captain or team member. Some of you as a coach, you're creating an environment for your team to thrive and be successful. And every day you're creating. 